All right, what's up, Dragon Brew? Today, we're gonna take a look at a Warriors list, mostly because it's another thing to try roaming thrown in, but this is also one that, if you're not in my Discord, you probably missed out on some conversations around this deck, and I have a few fun tricks with this we're gonna try today. I guess I should also let y'all know that if you wanna join the Discord or buy merch or anything, I keep lots of fun links down in the description all the time. So, this is gonna start with Iron Apprentice. This is not gonna be a Warrior, obviously, but we are playing much around the plus one, plus one theme on the counters, and this fits that perfectly. Now, one of the warriors I wanted to look at too that we haven't played much of in a very long time is Rada's Firebrand. Mostly because we can cast this pretty easily, but if we get counters on this, then it becomes hard for your opponent to block with all kinds of things. And if we can double this ability up because of Roaming Throne, well then, attacks get a lot simpler. Speaking of which, if you don't know what Roaming Throne is by now, you probably haven't been watching the channel because I think this is like the fifth or sixth deck we put it in. But here it is, Roaming Throne. It uh, doubles up all of the creature type that you choose when it comes into play and it counts as one of those types. Obviously, we're going to be choosing Warrior today. We're also going to be playing Query and Beast Caller because this is conveniently a Warrior. Every time we play a creature, it gets bigger. And what I also like about this is the fact that it combos very well with Foldair and Thrill Seeker. And what I mean by that is you would cast a Thrill Seeker Beast Caller would get a counter, then you put the counters on it from the Thrill Seeker, but then after you attack, you can fling the Beast Caller, then move those counters to the Thrill Seeker, and then now you can fling the Thrill Seeker. So you almost get double fling damage for however big the Beast Caller is, which is actually pretty cool. And if you give me a quick second, I'll tell you about a sponsor, then we'll finish up the deck list. CoolStuffInc.com is a proud sponsor of this channel. And you can show your support while getting 5% off your entire order by using promo code DRAGON at checkout. Need singles for constructed or kitchen table play? Looking to pick up sealed product or the latest in magic accessories? We've got you covered. CoolStuffInc.com is the place for all your Magic the Gathering needs. And support this channel by using promo code DRAGON at checkout. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. Now again, because we're on this whole counters kick, we're gonna be playing Botanical Brawler because this just makes a lot of sense, right? A lot of stuff's gonna get counters, so why not? Also gonna try some Sentinel of the Nameless City, which doesn't automatically get counters, but it does make maps, which can put counters on things. So we'll see how that goes. And we're gonna play some Cutsel Malamet Exemplar because it's a way to draw cards, but also keeps your opponent from casting stuff on your turn, which kind of takes away the options for things like Wandering Emperor and stuff, which is super nice. Gonna play some Doomscar Warrior because being able to search for more creatures is great, but it's another way to add counters. As is Boonbringer Valkyrie, which can let one of your big creatures come over the top and connect and also gains life. So this could be a good late game card against Mono Red, if nothing else. And then our non-creature spells in this deck are going to be Get Lost because we need some amount of removal. And we're gonna play a full set of Ozolith the Shattered Spire. Because even if we don't have something that just gets counters automatically, this lets us put counters on things, and making things like Rada bigger or your Botanical Brawler or whatever obviously is going to have a big payoff for us. But if you want the full deck list, it will be at the end of the video. Or you can just go down to the description below, look for the blue arrows that take you to our Moxfield link. You can see today's deck and a whole pile of other things you can play in standard. For now though, let's go see if Warriors is as good as we want it to be. Uh, we're definitely going to keep this. I, I did want to mention just randomly that if you're, any of you are going to be shopping with Amazon by chance, if you click one of my links in my description, and you do any shopping, I'll actually get a percentage based on whatever you buy uh, within 24 hours of clicking on any of those links. So it's just a cool little affiliate program. This is obviously, we're gonna choose Warrior here. And man, against Mono Red, I kind of really wanna just play Ozolith and then just play that next, I think. But you know what? We're just going to make the opponent use removal. We're not going to get anything out of this Beast Caller, I'm pretty certain, but that's fine. But it is very tempting to just play Ozolith, then play Sentinel, force them to deal with the Sentinel. Uh, here comes a play with Fire. Yep. Not a surprise, though. We can live with that. If that's as bad as it gets, so be it. We're at 15. Because we would have taken that same amount of damage or worse this turn, so that's fine. Play this out. Don't know if it's going to be beneficial for us to get a roaming throne. I mean, at least it's a four toughness, actually. That could matter. I mean, we're blocking no matter what. E even if it ends up being a reckless rage or whatever here. Okay, it's not, so that's good news. And they're only... I was going to say, you're only attacking with that? Yeah, we'll obviously block. They can look at three cards. We don't care. Uh, 
Uh, they got a squee. I mean, that's actually relevant. Uh, yeah. Gonna go ahead and call Warrior. Play this. The good news here is we actually get to attack with Vigilance, which is a pretty big deal. So we'll get double up there. Opponent doesn't have a good block. Uh, they don't even have a great attack on the ground, even if they decide they want to play Squee. So I don't hate this, actually. I mean, if they have a Rage, then we trade it for a Sentinel, and that's fine, too. Like, we're game for all that. All right, blocking here, blocking here. Let's see what you got. Lightning Strike, or uh, Play With Fire doesn't do it because they can't target the Roaming Throne, so that's that's not enough. So this is really about them just getting Sentinel, the Nameless City, out of the way. Or just putting us low enough so they can think they can finish us next turn, because they do still have a Flyer we're doing nothing about currently. Alright, there's a Rage. That was always going to be a possibility, so we'll take it. Ended up not being bad. Oh, then we got another one. That's funny. Uh, I don't know if that's even superior to what we could do here, though, but we're going to do it anyway. Another big four toughness thing. Unfortunately, we didn't get any of our cheap stuff here is what we really needed. All right. Uh, they do have enough that they could get Squee back out if they really wanted to. All right. Here's Squee again. Makes me wonder what those last two cards are in their hand, because uh, I have no idea right now. But we are going to be down to just six. Which means Reckless Rage and or other things start to become a real problem. Uh boy, what do we do here? We get to attack. We could attack for seven, eight if we want to. Or we could play two blockers. I think we have to go two blockers here. Much as I don't particularly want to i think we kind of have to we're not worried about squee coming back out here I'm trying to think like what could they play with the cards in their hand i mean i guess we have to attack because this is kind of our only shot to be able to finish them next turn right we have three on the ground we can't block phoenix chick anyway so we just have to hope they don't have the right cards here Unfortunately, that does have haste, but we can still block three things for the moment. That's great. Honestly, that's one of the best things we could have seen from the opponent. They do get a free card here if they want to. Nope, they're putting the damage on the Phoenix. All right. So we can give something trample and attack with everything. Is that the answer? I mean, uh, but then we just die a bunch of different ways. <laughs> Also, this could allow them to get Squee back, too, right? If they, Well, no, they'd have three other things. They would need four, right? Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think we I think we just go for it. I mean, I can't imagine why not. I mean, we get double backup options. So put one here and put one here so they just don't have a good block. No, actually, no, that's a mistake. I should have put the other trample on a sentinel, actually. Yeah, that would have been correct. Because then that would have been four. I was thinking it was still going to be three. Four then being blocked means at least three is getting through. This is likely going to have three or four get through, and that probably would have killed the opponent. So that, that was a bad, bad, bad counter there. When it was three, I was like, eh, but it, it, it being four does make a difference with the Roaming Throne being three and Trample. I mean, being five and Trample, but here we are. We have to survive a top deck from the opponent. Wait. Okay. Sure. All right. Would have made a difference. I mean, that the Trample from the other thing would have would have been big here. Uh, yeah, we'll, I mean, I guess we'll take this. We can't really cast it, but, uh, Restless Prey, sure, we'll just take this. Why not? We're, it, it, do they get the burn spell or not? That's really what this is. If they don't, we win. Actually, I guess it could be a rage, too. It could be a lot of things. All right, the mistake didn't catch up with us. We're all right. Okay, um, yeah, we'll keep it. 
not a super fast hand. I'm probably wanting to play Ozolith first, so this comes in as a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, even more so against red, though probably just going to get lightning striked anyway. But, you know, you got to take the risk. Let's go ahead. Don't know if it's going to work, but we'll find out. Oh, it's not just red. We've seen many, many hyper aggro gruel things, and this is definitely one of them. So we're going to take probably like six damage here. Nope, did not. Okay. Then let's play this. I will assume this is going to die. However, if it does not, that would be very, very good for us. But I don't think assuming it's going to die is that out of the realm of possibility. Alright. And another audacity? If so, that's tough. Yeah. We're not going to be able to do a lot about that. And another... Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're just dead. Actually, not true. Not true. We could fling... <laughs> Alright. I mean, there are some things we could do to, to not be dead. Um, oh, this is big if we can survive to that. Okay, let's go warrior, but just trying to figure out, there's no benefit really to putting the counters on Thrill Seeker. I mean, if we put counters on Thrill Seeker, we get, yeah, that doesn't do anything. Yeah, we'll just put the counters on the brawler. Plus, we're going to fling the Thrill Seeker anyway. All right. Um, I don't even know if we can attack here safely, but we're going to. I'm going to assume they have nothing with Trample. And in the turn, with the assumption that we will get to fling some... Actually, that's a mistake, because if they have a Reckless Rage, we're dead. I should have just killed the bigger Phoenix when I could. Oh, okay. Well, that's not terrible. That could have been way worse. Yeah, that's awesome, actually. Alright, so we block. Then we fling this here. And then we just take three. And then we get a chance to gain some life. And uh, might be able to turn this around. I mean, we're not out of the woods yet. I mean, opponent still has access to a lot of damage, potentially. That's a good card, but uh, not one we're looking to play right now. Obviously, counters go here, because we need as much damage as we can get. All right, go to 13. Have a first strike, flying, lifelink blocker, and the opponent's at 5, and we have an 8-8 eight, eight trampler. At least a 10-10 trampler next turn. Alright, that's fair. So then we're kind of caught up having to trade for Samet. That's tough. Don't necessarily want to do that. And the opponent did not want to spend on that. Interesting. So what's the worst that happens here? We take 4, 5, 6. If it's a Rage, it could be 7, 8, 9, 10. I mean, you know what? We're going to go here. Because we're going to first strike and gain 4. Yeah, that's fine. We're not dead. So that's that's all that mattered. Like, we don't die. <laughs> that was... I mean, I guess it could be... No, even then, they wouldn't kill us from here. You know, if they had, like, a rage or something on Samet. Yeah, that's not enough, I don't think. Close, but not enough. And then we've got this locked up. GG's. Wow. Wow, that was close. <laughs> uh, sure, we're going to try it. Don't know how this is going to work out, but we're going to give it a go. Let's see what we can do. I feel like we might still need to lead with Beast Caller here. Mostly because we don't have any lands and I can't really see a world to quickly get encounters on the Brawler, so. All right, hey. At least we got something to help us find more land. That could have been worse. Because we are probably gonna need it. 
Alright, uh, that slows down one of our cards, but not to a ridiculous amount. Alright, we'll go ahead and play this. Put it on Warrior. Uh, could cycle one of those if we wanted to. Hmm. I think we go ahead and do this and see if we can just keep Thalia at bay. Nope, just a bunch of lands on top. Alright, well, that didn't work out at all. Oh, that was about as bad as I could have been. All I wanted was one counter. It didn't matter, I guess. We wouldn't be able to block the Thalia now anyway. But I was just looking for a single counter. Would have been nice. Would have been nice. Um, Now I'm trying to think what future turns look like. I think here we go ahead and do this. Just put the counter on the Doomscar Warrior itself. Back with this Duder. All right. Needed to find more of our cheaper creatures. Part of our problem here. It's tempting to block Thalia, but that feels like a trap. Yep. That's what I thought. <laughs> I mean, we didn't get to kill anything anyway, but we took less damage, so, you know, that counts for something. Uh, Alright, so we're going to go Warrior. We're going to go here. Also call Warrior. Play this. And no attacks. So now the opponent has multiple things they got to deal with here, at least. All right. Looks like another get lost is incoming. Yep, fair enough. We accept that. I think what we're going to do is block here, block here, take 8, 9, 10, 11. Ah, oh, that'd be 13. We can't do that, huh? So... What's the best blocking situation we have? Yeah, opponent just drew well here. I don't think we have an out, sadly. We needed more of our cheaper creatures in the creature fight. And we unfortunately did not find them. And with the way our hand is, we got nothing. We will keep this. Ooh, we might actually get to see the Firebrand Roaming Throne this game. That would be cool. I mean, obviously, Rada could still Rada's firebrand could die or whatever, but we shall see. Hmm. Well, we'll put this out there to die because that's the uh, least concerning <laughs> to lose. We'd much rather have the beast caller later because it can just be bigger. And you know, as much as you don't like losing an early creature, if the opponent's doing that. And sending burn at your stuff. It's not the worst thing. Truthfully. Alright. We're going to go here. The only way this isn't dead is if they take the turn off to play like Squee or something. And that is a real good... Like if they take the turn off to play Squee, then we probably... Oh, they didn't have the land though. Nice. Uh, we're just going to take four. Because them saying they don't have a way to kill that is exactly what we want to see. Let's go ahead and go Warrior. And we're going to play this first. For two reasons. We're having to choose <laughs> Warrior a lot. Uh, because this can allow the Beast Caller to trigger multiple times on the next turn. This also gets double backup counters. If we attack with the Roaming Throne or whatever remains, we'll get to look at two cards. And since Roaming Throne also has Ward 2, they're not going to do much to it. Uh, hmm, that's a little suspect, huh? Alright, if you got a rage, let's see it. Nope, they're just going to go looking for lands. Awesome. And if they get the land for a lightning strike, they can shoot Beast Caller, but they can't shoot Roaming Throne, so that's fine. We can live with that. Yep, can't target opponent, it has ward. 
Don't do it. Hey, that's fine. Being able to turn this into a big creature, because that's all we've got. Yeah, that works. This is not bad either. But I think what we're going to do is just make this also into a big creature. For now. And then just say, all right, if you got things, you got things. Oh, and they're blocking. Anytime you got the red deck blocking, oh, that feels so good. I ain't going to lie. Like, I've been on both sides. When the aggro, the hyper aggro deck is on blocking duty, they're halfway to done. Only thing would be better is after this attacks, if we're able to find our Boonbringer Valkyrie. Ah, that'd be Chef's Kiss. I mean, you attack, I'm blocking. I don't care if you look at six cards. Those are not going to be devastating to us. You know, famous last words, but whatever. Bring it. Oh, and they're still grabbing lands. Interesting. They chose to do nothing. Huh. So they could play lands, but they didn't do anything. All right, I'm just going to attack. We're going to go deep diving for Valkyries. We did not find a Valkyrie. We found a Rada's Firebrand that we could play, but we're probably not going to cast that. Um, I'll take it anyway, though. At least it's cheap to cast. Did not find one there either. That's disappointing. Alright. Well, we're going to do things. Might as well do this. And then they'll be big. Alright. We're at 11. If they get us, they get us. I, I will just accept defeat, but they have to stop a lot of trample damage next turn right now. Godric, sure. Then you can play a Rage on it. Alright, that still doesn't get us dead. And that's the best play they could have had. Yep. Got it. Yeah, this looks fine. Go ahead and run this little dude out there. See if there's any cut downs. There are not. That's some information to have. Oh, we're going to get virtued, y'all. <laughs> yep. You can see that one a mile away. Uh, let's go warrior. We'll just play this. We need to draw something other than these lands, though. Like, these lands are not it. Uh, we're going to get... Go for the throated? Would make a lot of sense. Nope, just an underdog. Okay. Well, drawing all these lands is not helping us. Uh, it's actually a big detriment right now. That's the turn. Man, if we find, like, a Doomscar Warrior or something, that would be great. But, uh, this is not good at the moment. We need our creatures to show up. Uh, we're not blocking there. Do what you will. Alright. Makes sense. I mean, they probably still have a kill spell, I imagine. You know what? That's as good as anything. Why not? <laughs> Put that on warrior also uh, attack with just this I mean they can't cast anything right now so that's fine okay we don't get any bonus damage or anything but from trample but that's fine still come on let's find a boombringer valkyrie or something let's let's go big let's do some things Probably just going to play it again, I imagine. Oh no, they found another Virtue. That actually does suck for us. Alright, that's at least something that's useful. We get double counters. We get double treasure. Or maps, I should say. We'll use a map. 
to find a land. Fair enough. Uh, use a map. Yeah, we'll keep Brawler. Let's go. I mean, now we almost don't even care if Shieldred shows up because we'll just run head first into her. Oh, we lose our card on top of our library. Oh, darn. <laughs> but what's awesome is it does allow us to get another forest. So we can actually play and use Ozolith, which is cool because apparently we're just going to keep drawing lands, which is terrible. But hey, here we are. Play a land. Let's activate. And we're going to attack. All right, opponent's taking damage there. I'm going to go ahead and use this here. Why not? Yeah, that'll work. I mean, we got lethal. You got to play at least two blockers here. And we, we drew virtually all lands, which is kind of crazy, but... All right, opponent is not dead. Because we do not have a trampler or anything out. Oh no, they still have to block two things because we're going to be able to pump the other one too. So yeah, it doesn't even matter. Alright. That works. We'll put all the counters there then. It's a big 12-12 with trample. Like, why not? Uh, I'm not going to waste time. Actually, you know what? Let's just attack first. Get our map. That gets to block. Sure, we'll make this really big. We'll use this. We gotta be hitting spells, right? I was gonna say, geez. <laughs> like, at some point, there, we can't have that many lands. I mean, we've drawn so many. Oh, good deal. At least we got away with it. I'm not gonna lie, that one feels like we stole one a little bit, since they, like, destroyed a creature with a Seiju, destroyed something to go for a throat, got rid of two things with Virtue, were able to chump block for all, and we only really found a handful of real bodies the rest was just lands so that's actually was real good and to give credit where it's due the maps getting some of those lands out of the way was actually really good as much as they were annoying all right let's keep it and see what happens well we've been able to have some comebacks against mono red we'll see if that holds up or not Sadly, probably just going to play Rada out front by herself. Uh, we're just taking the damage here. Yeah. Try to get something more out of our apprentice later if we can. Uh, Alright, let's go Rada. I'm assuming Rada will probably get shot with the burn spell here. Kind of hoping we can find another apprentice to play behind a brawler would be pretty sweet. Maybe they only have three damage burn as well, and they don't want to blow it on something like that. But, I mean, either way, you know, we block, they rage, at least Rada gets to kill something. It's kind of what we're looking at here. Yeah. Uh, gotta block here, because a rage on the Swift Spear means we wouldn't kill it. This is just hoping for the best. You know, just putting it out there. Okay, it was just a play with fire. Okay, that's kind of good news. Not great news, but something. All right, I think the plan here is just play Brawler. See what kind of removal they have, if any. Not a great situation for us. <laughs> All right. I mean, I guess this is now where we get raged up if they have it. Yeah. Okay. Well, this might be a situation where our hand was just too slow, but we'll see. We're still not completely wrecked yet. If we can survive this turn, which we will now block with the Apprentice, knowing what we know. Question is, can we block and have something to... Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So, 
three, four. All right, so we do get some good blocks here, actually. This is not terrible. Like, we could block Swift Spear, block, and take six. We would gain four. Is that good enough? I mean, really, do I even just block Godric here? Like, that's a that's a real question. I don't know the answer to, though. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I thought I knew what I was exactly going to do here, but I don't. Oh, no, we we'll actually get one more point, actually. So, yeah, we block three here. Take five. Go to two. We will gain five. Go back to seven. The opponent will have three attackers. I think that works. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do this. I know I'm taking one more point, but I'd rather have the Swift Spear out of the way, all things considered. All right, let's go Warrior. We'll play Valkyrie. Pump this. We will attack so we at least gain the five. And then hopefully we don't die because we have first strike on the Boonbringer Valkyrie. Now, we could still die here if they have Witch Hunter's Frenzy or whatever that thing is. You know, deal five damage to a, a blocker or deal five damage to a creature. If they have that, then we're just dead. If they don't, then we can still first strike something and live here. And I had to get off two life, unfortunately. As much as I would like to save and block and whatever. Getting off that two life means that we don't die to a bunch of just, like, random burn stuff. Alright, that was it. Woo! Alright, let's keep it. We're on the draw, so we can't expect too much here. Let's see what we're working with. Definitely need some lands, though. No matter what we do. All right, well, they've taken a card there. We did find some land, so that's good. I think I'm going to go ahead and run this Rada out here. Back. Putting a couple of counters on Rada is pretty slick, too. Though they could just use, like, Virtue on it here. But they're not, which is great. All right. So I think doing this will at least get a removal card out of their hand next turn. No blocksies for you, friend. Take that whole six. Yep. I assume there was one somewhere, but that's okay. We can live with that. Just now, what do we want this to look like? Um, I think I'm going to go here first and play a Brawler. And then attack, because if they block, we can put counters on the Thrill Seeker, which would be two, and then the Brawler would get two, and that'd be real good for us. But they're probably just, I was going to say, on a bunch of removal, but apparently not. I mean, we could just kill Glissa here, which I think we're going to. Because that makes the most sense. And then attack. Alright, so go to eight. I mean, this deck is actually pretty fun, but you do have to kind of, like, systematically think about it. Both how your cards work in conjunction with each other, but also what you expect your opponent to do to your cards, right? Almost like, how does your opponent value your threats? So you can kind of figure out the order that you should play them or what you're willing to give up. Yep, Brawler Brawler, it's on you, friend. Better Triumph. Cool. Works for us. Oh, this is cute. Uh, yeah. Oh, do they have cut down? That sucks. I bet they do. Hmm. All right. No attacks. If they do, they're just going to fling it, use it here anyway. Oh, it's a Poisoner. Gosh dang it. It wasn't that. We could have taken advantage of it. 
I played too scared. But we'll see. Gloombringer Valkyrie might have a chance to break things open here, which would be nice. Draw. Ooh, back to back Valkyrie. That's pretty sweet. So, what do we do here? Like, we attack, make children not block, force them to trade. All right, sure, I guess. Uh, Shielded can't block. Yep. Put counters on Valkyrie? Why not? I mean, if they have a kill card, it's coming for Valkyrie anyway, but we're just going to play another one and try to attack with a Firebrand anyway. But they're also in a tough spot because they're only at five, so even if you kill the Boombringer... You can't even attack with Shieldred because then the Firebrand makes it not block. Yep. We did it. All right, we get to go first in this one, so let's uh let's keep it. I think I'm just going to go Beast Caller on 2. Uh, all right, that seems fine, I guess. May I assume they'll use removal on a Beast Caller, but we'll see. Oh, they didn't. So this is interesting on what they choose here. Wow. Okay. That's not what I thought they were going to choose because we couldn't even cast that right now. But uh, this is cool, I guess. Get our attacks on. All right. Killing the smaller one makes sense. And going to play another bat. Nope, they're just going to kill that Beast Caller now. Okay, fair enough. They played a bunch of removal there. Respect. We got more where that came from, though. Going Warrior. Now, this could be a shield return, which would be tough, but not impossible. Nope, it's just a Dread, not Dread Knight turn, which is okay. Just double draw with the Dread Knight. Interesting. Okay, well, we're going to play this first. Then go with this. And then we're going to attack. The opponent's at eight. Might as well play the land. So now we can attack with our creature land. We can pump something with Ozlith. Like, we got choices on the coming turns. All right. They're going to get rid of our Ozolith. That's fine. I don't think that's uh, greatly here nor there. I think we go ahead and activate this. Go and attack. The one that has to block something here. All right. That works for us. They go to two. And now they've got to find multiple removal and or leave Cavern Bat back. So not a bad situation to be in. Oh, looks like they might just destroy our land here. Nope, they didn't want to do that. Yeah, I think there's a world where they could have, like, used Field of Ruin to kill the Prairie. And then maybe play one of these Dread Knights, probably, and leave the Bat back. So you force me to find something that puts counters on itself to make the Botanical Brawler bigger. If that happens, then you're just in a tough spot because you can't really block with the Trample. But that's probably the only real out they had. But I don't know what the rest of their hand looked like. But yeah, that's a good win because they had a lot of answers to start with here. And we were able still to overcome that. All right, so that worked out pretty well. I, if anything, I would say I don't know if the deck needs three Roaming Thrones necessarily i think it could probably get by on two and you could just play 60 cards i would just greedy and went to 61 but i think if you still wanted to play that many i would play an additional thrill seeker i think having a third thrill seeker is actually really big for a couple of reasons one it puts two counters which a lot of times this deck is three counters so that's actually really good or more if you have like beast caller botanical brawler whatever but just having a way to get extra damage to finish the game 
is super nice, right? I mean, you can't be overstated because we don't really have that much removal. We don't have direct damage. So that's actually pretty strong. So if you don't have Roaming Thrones yet, or maybe you're missing like one Doomscar Warrior or whatever, I would go ahead and make Thrill Seeker the other replacement card. I would play one more of those, and I think you're going to be pretty good if you do that. But what we ended up playing today was four Iron Prentice, two Get Lost, three Rodas Firebrand, four Ozolith the Shattered Spire, four Korean Beast Caller, four Botanical Brawler, two Voldaren Thrill Seeker, three Sentinel the Nameless Race, three Cutsel Malamet Exemplar, three Doomscar Warrior, three Roaming Throne, two Boombringer Valkyrie, two Plains, two Forest, a Copper Line Gorge, four Brushland, four Razor Verge Thicket, three Restless Prairie, four Cavern Souls, and four Secluded Courtyard. I also wanted to mention that I think several people see lists like this and they ask like, why are not playing stuff like uh, Overgrown Farmland, for instance, as one of the lands since it makes red and green? The issue is that you don't want too many lands to come to play tapped in a deck like this, right? You want to be able to play something on turn two, play something on turn three, like, and even on turn one in some cases. So you want to limit the number of lands that come to play tapped. So here we're just playing three Restless Prairies. And that's partly because those give us a little bit of extra reach to get some extra damage in late, to have a late blocker, or even after a sweeper being able to still attack for three plus, or even be able to do that, play a Thrill Seeker, fling your land, whatever, right? It gives you more options than just playing that Overgrown Farmland. And since you already have Cavern of Souls, Secluded Courtyard, you don't really need it, to be honest. But overall, like I said, I would probably try to squeeze in a couple more Thrill Seeker, and I think that would be the biggest difference in the deck. But overall, this one actually worked out pretty well. So if you're looking to play something in this space, thumbs up. In everyday's card spotlight, we're gonna talk about Arwen, Weaver of Hope. This is one that sort of surprised me a little bit, but it is already going for over $6, starting to encroach on like seven or eight in a lot of places. And it's actually totally worth it. If you're playing anything that cares about plus one, plus one counters, this is super good, right? Basically every card you play after this is gonna get an additional minimum plus one. But if you have anything that's put counters on Arwen since then, when everything's coming in as a two or a three bigger than it is, and it actually scales up, which is crazy. It's super cheap to cast. It's not the biggest body, but if you're playing plus one, plus one counters, you don't really care because it's going to be get bigger faster. There's a lot of these types of odds and ends cards that came out in Lord of the Rings and in Doctor Who this year. So if you're deck building, don't skip over those sets. There's a lot of really good stuff for a whole variety of decks. And if you're looking for something just different and fun, check out this really weird gruel deck we played that was surprisingly good and played super big haste creatures. It was ridiculous. Well, that's all I have you for now. We'll see you next time.